Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at lambdas and how to create a small Java program that actually acts like a lambda. We're not going to connect to any databases, we're not going to connect to anything, so it's just a, a hello world a lambda Java example, and I'm going to tell you about uh, the different types and uh, what we need to set up uh, regarding the methods, because we want to create a REST it's actually a REST API we want to and we want to use the Amazon uh, Lambda uh, functionality. A Lambda is actually just a small program um, that can take uh, that can take events from an S3 bucket. It can take an event from a HTTP request. It can take events from a lot of things that happens up in, in the cloud. And uh, yeah, a HTTP request is just one of them. So actually, what we are getting in uh, in our Java program is not a HTTP request as we usually know it. It's actually an event. Um, but let us get started. So let me just press this button right here. And I'm going to use the, the UI. I'm going to use the browser uh, console. I'm not going to use the terminal console today. I'll make another video about how cool the, the, the terminal uh, console is and how easy it is to use also. Um, but first, yeah, so first, this is, uh, I have an account on Amazon. Of course, you need an account uh, with Amazon, a uh, cloud account, if you want to, to, do, to do something that, I, that, that I'm doing right here. And uh, what you actually do is you press the create function button right here. And then you can give it a name like um, video, video tutorial one, something like that. Then you can choose the runtime, as, as, and as you can see here, you can actually choose a lot of languages, and some of them are quite lightweight, like the Go uh, language, and also Node.js, and Python is also lightweight. You could also argue, of course, that .NET and Java are lightweight. Usually, you would not say that because they, they are made for uh, made for a lot of uh, yeah for, for bigger, for larger frameworks. But of course, all of these languages you could say that they are lightweight if you want to. But um, yeah, you can choose from all of these languages right here. And there's a lot of other supported right here. And we want to use a Java 11 uh, Lambda today. So I'm going to choose Java 11. Another important thing that you need to, to choose is uh, uh, the permission. And here we just say create a new role with basic Lambda permission. That, that's fine. Then uh, Amazon will create a role for us that matches. And, 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 and we want to say that this should be an open, uh, in, it, should, it should be able to be used by everybody. But that is not uh, now, so I'm not actually not just say that this uh, this is fine. Create a new account role and code signing. We do not want to co sign our code. If you if you're signing your code, then it's this uh, you have you take a certificate and then you actually create a file for each class, um, which signs the code. So each class actually signed with another file that then proves that this. Uh, Java program was made by you because you're the only one who has this certificate. Uh, we don't want to dig into that just today. Then we have the network. If you want to connect to a database or something, then you need to choose a network. Uh, or else it will just run on its own network. So we are, we are not choosing any network today. But if you want to connect to anything, then of course you need to, to connect it to uh, put, it on, put it on VPC. Uh, we will do that in another video. So create the function. So now I'm creating the Lambda. Let us see what happens. Uh, we have not given it any code yet, so uh, so of course it needs the code. We have not also not set what should trigger this uh, lambda right here, so of course we also need to do that. So here we have the, the lambda, and let us just go a bit down right here, see that everything is uh, as we would expect. We have the basic settings. We have a memory limit of 512 megabyte. Also nice to know. And there's a default timeout for 15 seconds. So we so we should not do a lot of uh, calculation that takes more than 15 seconds per default, or else we need to change these values uh, right here. And uh, there's no net, we are not on any network right here. So that's also fine right now. There's a state machine, and to be uh, to be honest, I actually I do not know what it what it does. We will play with that in another video. Uh, concurrency. How yeah, this is how much. Uh, how, how many times can this uh, lambda be used at the same time? And database proxies, we're not using any databases. So we are we are quite happy right now. But we need something to trigger this uh, lambda. And of course, we also need to uh, we also need to upload the code. Let me just go, go right here. Here we have the function code. And we need to upload a, a zip file or a jar file. It can also be a, a file from Amazon S3. This is very important. 
Because what I actually found out when I uploaded my the first file that I created was that it was larger than 10 megabyte, and then there was not it was not possible to upload it to this, and then I need then I would have to use the Amazon S3. I'm going to create another video where we are going to upload a Spring Boot application instead. So that means first of all we need a jar file, and right now we do not have a jar file because we have not created this together, right? So let us go to IntelliJ. So the first thing I actually did, let me just go to this application right here. I wanted to go, I created a Spring application as I usually do by pressing File, New Project right here. Just because I like the Spring framework and then I know that uh, yeah, I, I, have, I have all the tools that I need, uh, right? So then I chose uh, Spring Initializer, so this one right here. Then I chose Next and I chose 11, uh, Java 11, not 15, because uh, right now Java 11 is supported uh, and I did not see Java 15 in the drop down from, uh, with the Amazon uh, uh, Lambda function. Then I chose Gradle, then I pressed next, then I ticked off Lombok, and then I, take, then I added the Spring Web, and next, next, finish, and then I ended up with this project right here. I actually created a cool Lambda, and uh, a Lambda is created by doing two things. Let me just show that. First, we need to write uh, dependencies. So if we go to the Gradle, I'll show you that actually in another project, because I did the exact same things in, a, in another project that's more lightweight. So but what actually I did was I created a Lambda, uh, I added the dependencies first, then I created this lambda right here. Then I said implements request handler, and you can see all of this stuff or stuff up here. This is Amazon, uh, this is Amazon classes, AWS classes, right? And then, so I implement this request handler um, uh, interface right here. This this uh, generic right here that is the return type. So if you're returning a string. Then you uh, then then this needs to be a string. Of course, as usual, I'm going to return a spaceship, but I have uh, I've not created I've created a spaceship uh, in, in the other project. We're going to see in just a minute. Then here we have a JSON to that is, that are able to uh, yeah pretty print uh, objects uh, yeah into into JSON. You could also use uh, JSON of course and the uh, object map out there instead. Then we have the handle request itself. It needs to return a string because we chose string up here as a generic. Then of course we also need to return the string, and because we have string string as the as the as the event map right here. And this is why usually uh, when you get an event, then you would take the information from this event map right here. Maybe you have an S3 bucket. You have some information, some metadata about whatever was put there or or copied from there, whatever whatever trigger you have. So there will be some event data right there. And then usually you will take that and use it somehow. Right now, I, ju I just create a response, Merry Christmas, a string response, and then I print, then I printed out the environment, environment variables, and I used the JSON uh, right here. Actually, a lot of this code right here is taken from the default tutorial example. If you go and ask uh, Amazon about a tutorial example up, up there, then this will be, um, then this will look a lot like that. Then I return the response, and the response is just the string right there. But, okay, and then I was happy, then I pressed Gradle, build right there, then I built uh, my whole project, and I was so happy, so, because I almost, I was uh, I was very, very fast, and I was, uh, uh, yeah, I was almost done, so I could start making my video, that's what, at least what I thought, but then if I went, when I went to lips, the lips folder right here, it, look, it takes up 24 megabyte just to create one jar file. And the limit is 10 megabyte on this I want to first to upload to the S3 bucket. So I had to create a new project, a lightweight project, and that's what I did right here. I pressed File, New Project. I chose Gradle instead, and I ticked off Java, and I chose, again, SDK 11. Then I pressed Next, I gave it a good name, I finished up, and then I ended up with this project right here, and I added, I got these dependencies right here, and I added these extra dependencies right here. Um, and these dependencies, these are also the ones from the uh, from the default tutorial, tutorial example. If you if you look if you search for you can just search for AWS Lambda and then Java tutorial, then you will then you can get the dependencies which are these ones right here. Uh, then I also added I added Lombok per, I added, added that myself. I actually stole it from the Spring project, and then I also yeah I think I got this per default the uh, JUnit five. I did I have, I've not added it at least so. Okay, this is the JUnit five uh, test framework, which is also which is added there. So, so that was actually now I was actually happy. The, then I went and created my spaceship because this this time I wanted to make it object oriented, model, captain, fuel like this, and then I created my new awesome lambda. I implement this interface again. This time I chose to return a spaceship instead of a string, so that means I'm returning a uh, spaceship right there. 
And I'm just returning a fixed value. Return new spaceship, round, mic, and 77% of fuel loaded right, uh, in, in, on the spaceship right now. So that's pretty, pretty simple. And then I pressed Gradle Build. I chose Gradle out here. And I, I ticked off the build right here. And then I got an Omento Lips folder. And I was very uh, scared of uh, what I saw, but then I was actually uh, very pleasant surprised because now I saw there was only 3.6 kilobytes. So it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. All that, all, uh, all of that spring stuff, it, uh, yeah, of course, it, it gives us a lot of good things, but it also takes up a lot of space. In this case, it was like 20 megabytes compared to 3.6K. So now we have the, um, and uh, yeah, of course I also created a good test. And I actually got a question from uh, one, one person in the community. That's why I, I created this video at all, actually. Uh, then the question was, how will you test a Lambda locally? And it's so, so simple because your Lambda is just a piece of Java code. So that means that if you are connecting to a database, then you need to connect to, the, then you also need to be the, to connect to the database. Uh, and if you're connecting to the database in the cloud, of course, you also need to have the, that available on your local machine. And, and here you can use Docker. Uh, you can use Docker containers. You can use a special uh, configuration for when you are in development mode. And you, should, you can also use a special configuration mode for when you are in production mode. And you can do that several ways. You can actually, you can actually pass in, in the event. You can actually pass on extra data. So it means that you can actually pass on... Um, uh, you can actually pass on whether this is the development. Uh, yeah, which stage is, is this actually? You can actually pa pass on the stage, and the stage is uh, whether this is the development environment or the um, or the, the test environment or the production environment. That will actually be. You could place that as a stage. Uh, I think it is actually there but per default in the in the events as stage data. Uh, we'll look into that in another video. This is kind of up and running, and also to see whether we can actually run a test. Um, so here I have my space. Uh, okay, so I, I create a new instance of my awesome Lambda handler. My handler, when I run it with the handle request, then it needs an event and a context. The event, I will just leave that an empty hash map. I do not need to uh, give any information there right now because we're not using any data from it. Then I create a context that was a little bit more difficult. Again, I'm just filling in dummy values. If you have trouble finding dummy values, then uh, you could use Java Faker, which I've created another video on about. So. And that's actually it. Then I call the, the handle request. Then I get my spaceship out. Then I print out the spaceship right here. I assert that it, my lambda is not null. I should also assert that the spaceship is not null. Um, assert not null spaceship right there. And of course, also the properties dot get captain dot get fuel dot get model like that. So then we we'll press play. Run the test, please. Let's see what happens now. Because I'm using Lumbok, then I do not, then I get a really good to string method with uh, at data. That means that when I'm when I'm printing out my spaceship right here, then it would actually look quite nice. So instantiating tests. Yes. Enable. Uh, yes, of course I want to enable that, but. It was not necessary, it actually ran anyway. So let me just check right here. So first of all, environment variables. Blah, blah, blah. So it actually took all my environment variables and also placed them right there. I just created a context, which was a random num. You can see the identity is just a UUID, so it's just, just a random string. And let me just remove that part right there. And then we get the spaceship down here. Spaceship model round, Captain Mike, fuel 77%. So we are very, very happy. Now we know we have a good, um, we have a good JAR file, we have a good program, so now we can upload it and but you know, it's right there. So I'll upload it to our Lambda that we just created. And I'll press save. And the next thing I need to do is I need to tell, because now I've just got a jar file that we can, and we could have like 10 Lambdas in this uh, jar file. That's okay to have 10 Lambdas there. We just need to tell uh, Amazon which, which, uh, oh, no code signing. That was not the one I wanted. We just, just need to tell Amazon which, uh, which class and method 
that it should execute. So here, this is wrong right now. Example, uh, hello, that's not right. So I need to go to look to my workspace. Then I copy the package right here. Copy, paste it right here. And, oh, it should be a dot. And then the class name right down. First time, actually, I think it's an, an handle request. That's the right method name because we're implementing the interface. So now we have that right there. Then the first thing is we could actually test it. So we could actually try it out before we had to add any triggers. Then we can just see does the program work at all. Press this test button right here. Since it's made for events, and it, is, it sounds really weird because you actually, we know that we want to create a HTTP request to get a HTTP response back. Um, then you actually need to create an event. So, um, so I chose the hello world and then you need to create some kind of event. And this is actually the event, blah, blah, event. So the event has a name and it has a content, it has some data. And once you have created that, then you can actually test your application. So it actually gets all of that information in the event. So let us test it. Locks, okay, that is an error. Details, what does it say here? Class not found. Ah, it's a test. Sorry. I was actually standing on the right. I was standing on the uh, embarrassing. Embarrassing. It was the wrong. Um, it was the wrong. Um, it was the wrong class. So uh, again, I pressed the code signing. I don't know why I always press the, press the code signing. It's just a uh, habit, I guess. Runtime here. So this was the one. Yes, save. Let us try to test again. But that's really good. Now we actually saw what happened if if we if we if there's an error, right? So and then the details and the result is right here. A beautiful spaceship object. Can it be better? Can it be better? Yes, it can, because now we can set up the uh, we can set up the the, the the trigger. But first of all, that's that's a lot of uh, log output right here. So if you're bored, then look at the log output and then you can see whatever that says. So this is a good uh, way to actually see that everything works as it should. So I'm going down to the designer right here. Then I'm going to add a trigger. And there's a lot of triggers, as you can see right here. We can trigger on a Dynamo DB event. You can trigger on a lot of weird stuff here, S3. But the one that we want to trigger on in, is in the top. We want to trigger on API gateway right there. And we want to create a REST API. There was also uh, already some I already created. That was to practice and to see what actually happened. And here we need to choose open. Important, important, important. Because if you add security, of course you can also try with security. We can make uh, yeah, we can make other videos about that. But uh, if yeah, but that, uh, do it without security to begin with. Then everybody can reach your endpoint. So do not expose any important information. Of course, when you make open endpoints, then it should be information that uh, yeah that that is not uh, sensitive. Deployment state, default, that is a default, but uh, let us choose beta just to, to say that this is it's just for testing. The first is deployment state is just for testing. You can create as many as you want afterwards. And uh, API in a video tutorial API, yeah, that's also default name, but that's, it's a good one, right? Enable metrics and log error again, I don't need that. If you want to have some binary media files as a response, we do not do, want to do that, we are returning JSON. So let us just press add. And now we get a faulty HTTP endpoint, and I'll show you why. And it actually took me uh, some time actually to figure this one out. But if I press, so now we have the API gateway there, right there. If I press that and go, to, okay, we can actually see down here. Here we have API gateway, and we can see the details. And the the problem with this can actually not be seen right here. And we have the endpoint right there. If I try to run it right now, then I'll actually get an error because. Uh, of that error. Uh, yeah, now I'll show you why. Internal show error, and I'll show you why. Whenever you get an error like that, then you can uh, go to the gateway, which I'll do that right now. Of, of course, you can also create and um, you can also, yeah, you, yeah, you will go to the gateway actually. So we go to the gateway. Of course, you can also read the logs for errors. That's what I wanted to say. Of course, and then you can see specifically what this error is. But right now, uh, I went to resources and I went to video tutorial and then my uh, method right here. So this is called a resource, this one right here. This is called a method and this is the HTTP method. That means right now we can use any HTTP method that we want to. 
is get post, put post delete doesn't matter. This will trigger the lambda. And here we can see the nice flow here, method request, integration request, and here's the problem. This is not a lambda proxy. And it took me some time to figure out because uh, when you when you are if you if you choose this type of request, that means that then you need to give a response which matches the lambda uh, proxy object response. That means you need to um, return a certain formatted JSON. You cannot just return a spaceship like I did. You have to put it in the body uh, key, and we will not do that tonight. So tonight we want to we actually we are going to fix this instead. Then we hit, then we reach the lambda, and then we return the response to the user right there. And I can press the test button just to show you again that this does not work. It gets, it does not matter which one I use. And then I press test, and I say, oh, internal server error. And then if you scroll down, and you'll get this weird message about uh, as uh, yeah, the action cannot um, cannot serialize. It, yeah, I cannot pass it into serializing JSON passing exception. Blah 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 blah. I cannot blah blah. Then does not have a startup or something like that. But the problem is here. That you that I did not return the data the, the correct in, in in the format that is expected by the uh, Lambda proxy format. So what we're going to do instead we're going to press the uh, the resource which is video tutorial one. Then then we press create method, and then I want to create get. I also I only want to use the get method. I don't want to see that it's any. And then I can press the get. Oh, and then we can see right here Lambda function. If you tick off this. Uh, Lambda proxy integration. Then you get uh, then you get that situation that we do, just got in with the any uh, method. So do not take off this unless you want to use uh, the lambda proxy instead. I want to use lambda function that actually just returned me the spaceship. That was what I wanted in my situation right here. Lambda function. Now we need to use the right name. And since I know that it's this name right here, then I'll just copy paste that, or else I could go back to my. And uh, I could also copy paste it from here from the first uh, tab. Use default timeout. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay, that's like 29 milliseconds. That's uh, 29 seconds. Sorry, I just read that the, the lambda will actually time out after 15 seconds. But this is the HTTP uh, gateway. Add permission. Yes, you're about to to give API gateway permission to invoke lambda function. Yes, that is a good idea. That's exactly what I want. So want today this API to be able to trigger that lambda and then return that response. I'm going to delete the any delete methods deletes. And now when I press get, you can see now it does not say proxy. Then it actually just says the right lambda. So now it says type lambda and then it says my region. Again, now I can press test. Output pass through. Yes, that was also an important one. Then we have a get right here. And I can give some headers. I can give some query strings. I do not want to do that. Yeah, I can also add some state variables. The state variables. Uh, yeah, that's a whole section for. Yeah, it's, it's very smart. You can do a lot of cool things with uh, state variables. So, okay, but this is this was the response. Two hundred and uh, model round to Captain Mike and fuel. 77%. So I'm very, very happy. Now I want to deploy it. So let us deploy it. Deploy API. Which states do you want to deploy it to, Mike? I want to deploy it to beta. And because um, I still just want to uh, give it as, as test, I could also have created a new stage. And I, I will actually show where. Okay, here are the, here are the stages. You can see here we have a stage. And uh, I, uh, this was just created for me, the beta one, because I pressed deploy. If I, if I press deploy again with another stage, then I'll also get, for instance, the production stage. And I can also press create here if I want to, but I don't want to do that now. I just I just want to enjoy. Uh, if I go to my method right there, then you can see this URL right here. I get the whole invocation URL right here. I'm so happy. Copy. Then I go to let us let us curl a bit. Let us curl a bit. Let us curl a bit. So I'll write curl minus v so I get all information. And then that endpoint. It is so beautiful. Look what it says in the bottom. Model round, Captain Mike, fuel 77%. I'm happy. I have a test to test my content. I have not connected to anything at all right now, which is not a normal situation. I know that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have to we will dig into that in another situation because now we are up and running with Amazon Lambdas, and it's um, it, yeah, it's being uh, used more and more. So uh, the the cool thing here is that um, it's very fast to place uh, things into the, the different environments, and we do not need to 
have our own Spring container running with Tomcat and all that. And we, right now we're not using Docker either right now, right? So we have a lot of things. Um, yeah, this is it's very fast to copy or to, uh, to code the stuff right now. Of course, right uh, very soon we will actually need all the modules that uh, that Spring actually gives us all the connectivity and all, all the cool stuff that we usually get right there. Um, so this is more like yeah, this is more a piece of code that can return something um, when triggered. So I actually like it. I think it's uh, it's very cool. I'm looking forward to dig deeper into it. If I remove the minus V, then it's a bit more clean, uh, a cleaner response that we get right there. I'll delete this uh, endpoint right right after this video. So if the, if it does not work for you, the endpoint, then it's because it's gone. You have to create your own Amazon account and you have to create your own Lambda. But now just follow these steps that I showed you right here. And then you'll be happy. And thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening. Feel free to ask questions as usual. They make me very happy. And uh, actually this, this video actually was uh, triggered by a question. And to you that actually asked me the question, please write me if I uh, answered your question or if you meant um, in, in a, yeah, something else. Because the, the question just said, please show me how to test my lambdas locally before I deploy it on uh, my on my Amazon account. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.